So let's actually work this out and calculate the potential energy for each case. So if we said, uh, let's call this uh, displacement delta x. Okay, let's just say it's delta x. So we have a potential energy that's going to be equal to the negative of the work. The work is fx times delta x, and there are no y and z components in this case. The force itself is the charge times the electric field, x component. There's just an x component here, and that's a positive x component. And the charge, in this case, this is a plus E, the, the E being the proton charge, E being 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So we have a negative E, little e, times big E x times delta x. Okay, so that's the change in potential energy in this case. Uh, in this case, we said the potential energy went down as it, as it moved from left to right. In this case, we have, again, the negative of the work. It's the negative of Fx times delta x, or the negative of Q times E times delta x. But what's the charge now? Negative little e, right? It's the charge of an electron, not a proton. So we have a negative times a negative Ex delta x. So we have a positive E delta Ex delta x. So that's the change in potential energy for the electron versus the proton. So in this case, potential energy goes down. In this case, potential energy goes up. But the expressions look pretty similar, right? I mean, it's just all we're doing is changing the sign. So what if we said, well, OK, if I do it for the proton, it's the negative of a positive E times E sub X delta X. But if I do it for the electron, I could write it this way. I have a negative times a negative E, E sub X times delta X. So the only thing that's different here is the charge. The E sub X times delta X is the same in both of those expressions. So here's sort of the punchline. Just like we've defined electric field to be the force per unit charge, so we just divide out the charge and just look at the, the, the force per unit charge. In this case, the only difference is the charge. But there's still this negative times an EX times delta X for both of those cases. So let me look instead at the change in potential energy per unit charge for the proton. Delta U over the charge, which is positive E, is a negative E sub X times delta X. For the electron, delta U over the negative E gives me a negative capital E sub X times delta X. We get the same expression on each side, and that is useful, okay? Because now we don't have to care about what particular charge is moving from one point to another. We can just look at two different points, think about the distance between them or the path from one point to another and say, I know the change in potential energy per unit charge along that path. And then I can apply any charge I want and find what the actual potential energy change would be. Okay? That's the value of what we're going to be doing. And so this thing has a special name. We want to then define a quantity, which is the potential or change in potential energy change in electric potential energy per unit charge the 
give it the symbol V. So it's a change in capital V, and that's equal to a change in capital U, electric potential energy, U electric, divided by the charge. And this thing is called the change in just electric potential. Okay. Kind of an unfortunate name. It's not potential energy. It's just potential. And when we say potential, we mean energy per unit charge. Okay. This thing has units of energy divided by charge, so units of joules per coulomb, but there's a special name for that unit. It's called what? It's a volt. This is one volt. So when you hear the term voltage, a voltage is a change in energy per unit charge. Okay, it's, it's a coulomb per, or excuse me, a joule per coulomb. Okay. Note the relationship though. We now say, can say that this delta V is the same for both the proton and the electron. It doesn't depend on the charge. It's still going to be negative E sub X times delta X. And so we can write that more generally for, at least for the case of a constant field, for a constant electric field or a uniform electric field. We can relate the change in energy per unit charge, the change in electric potential to the electric field. It's equal to negative E sub X delta X minus E sub Y delta Y minus E sub Z delta Z. But what is that? What kind of uh, product is that? That's a dot product. So we can write delta V is equal to negative of the electric field vector dotted with what we'll call the delta L vector, uh, some path length that has an, uh, a, ch a displacement in the x, y, and z direction. Okay.